today, Sue, who's going to take us through an awesome talk about um, about uh, uh, tips and tricks for really maximizing your DIY projects. Um, so let me go ahead and just introduce Sue and bring her video up and say hello. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start her video. Um, but we're really Sue is actually Sue is a real estate agent by day, but um, she has a passion for miniatures, and she does such a terrific job online. Hi, Hi Sue. Sue. Just introduce yourself, if you would. Talk a little bit about your background, how you got into miniatures. I know you have an extensive interest in these small treasures, and you've built over 10 dollhouses, um, yes. refurbished as well as uh, built from scratch. And you're going to take us through some of your uh, most talked about tips and tricks um, you have a very popular Instagram account, which has a, a wonderful following. And I think what's amazing about what you do is that you set people at ease when when tackling some of these big, big projects. And you make people feel stressless going into them by setting certain, certain parameters and having these sort of big sweeping um, ideals about when you start a project. So you're going to take us through that over this miniversity lecture. And thank you in advance if I don't get to say thank you. Um, but, but so start off and tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's go into some of those tips and tricks. Perfect. <laughs> um, I, I had dollhouses growing up and um, loved them. And then when I got into my early 20s, um, that's when I really dug in in my hobby. Um, I got my first style house in my 20s, loved it. And but well, then when I got married um, and had kids, I literally shelved my hobby, put it aside. But now that my kids are independent, um, I got back into my hobby in 2018. And I do currently have um, 11 houses. And the one I'm working on now that I'm doing on my Instagram account is uh, the Spring Run Farmhouse. And that's my seventh kit. Um, I love to build kits, but I do also like to renovate um, houses that are already built. I've, I've, I've purchased some houses off of Facebook Marketplace and I've uh, renovated um, those. So. So, yeah, that's actually one of the tips and tricks that I didn't see on, on the list that you mentioned that you might be covering. Can you talk a little bit about that finding the about the power of Facebook Marketplace and finding really good things that you oh, can actually. Yeah. yeah, you can um, on Facebook Marketplace, you can set up an alert for dollhouses or, or anything that you're searching for. Um, and even set uh, the distance of how far away you're willing to travel to, to find whatever it is you're looking for. Um, yeah. So that's how I found a couple of my houses that I renovated. Awesome. Yeah, great. Oh. That's a great tip right there. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think uh, you, you can do that on eBay to Craigslist. There's other places you can find doll houses for, for pretty fairly cheap. Yeah, um, there were a lot of folks just asking for your Instagram link, and which I just post, popped in there for for folks to see. It, yeah, it's Sue's small obsession. Yes. Got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so there were several things you wanted to talk about, sort of like buckets of of DIY. I don't know what you call them, like ideas or or uh, paradigms. I don't know how you uh, how how you refer to it, but they're really very, very important nuggets of, of information that people should consider when taking on a really large DIY project. Um, yeah. And one of them, one of them was, was, was literally uh, start small. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that's the best, one of the best things I can tell you, if you're brand new to the hobby, haven't done anything yet, um, I suggest starting small with, with a room box or um, a, a, a small kit, maybe a, a two or three room dollhouse kit. Um, because whether you build a small kit or a large kit, you're gonna go through the exact same steps. You're gonna do everything the same. Um, with, if you do a small kit, you're not gonna become as overwhelmed um, and you're gonna finish quicker, which will hopefully then spur you on to 
to tackle the next house, which could be bigger then. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point is is to really get the those small wins, quote unquote, because that will give you inspiration. Absolutely. You know, do one or two rooms, feel good about it, because that's going to make you want to do more. Going big just sets yourself up for disappointment. It, it really can. Um, it's just, and in, in really, when you're doing a small, um, even a small room box or a small kit, um, just take everything one small step at a time. Plan your plan your your um, design and your um, I guess layout and your decor. But when it when it comes to those directions, just look at those directions as just miniature steps to the process, and just take yeah, it one step yeah. at a time to try to yeah. avoid becoming overwhelmed. Right, right. Um, you you talk a lot about setting expectations. Um, oh yeah. You, you talk a little <laughs> bit about. That. Yeah. Well, again, the importance if, of yeah. If if you're new to the hobby, um, I think if you manage your expectations from from the get go, um, it's it's not a weekend project, and, and it, it it will take you maybe six months, may, maybe a year, or even longer. It just depends on how many hours you're going to dedicate to it, and if you're going to work on it every single day, or if you're just going to wait to work on it on just the weekends, it, it will take you a while. And I think if you know that ahead of time, yeah. it'll it'll be easier for you and you won't be so hard on yourself thinking, geez, I didn't get much done today. Well, it, it takes time. <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. There's nothing yeah. quick about putting a house together. There's nothing quick about it. Yeah, <laughs> talk a little bit about trial and error and, and that, that part of the process for you. I mean, go back 10, 12 houses ago, where were yeah. you at? And, and, and talk a little bit about that so folks can understand that, you know, it, it takes some time to get to where you are and it takes oh. some, some trialing and error and making mistakes and, and also learning from them. Would you say, would you oh. agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and that kind of goes back to another reason to start with a room box or a small kit then you don't feel like you wrecked everything. And the good news is you, you don't wreck anything. You just undo what you just did. If you, if you did something wrong, you just undo it. You repaint, you sand it down, you repaint, you tear off the wallpaper, you, you put up new stuff again. Um, but you just can't beat yourself up about it. Because remember, you're, you're learning. It's, it's, this is a new process. Yeah. Too, so you just yeah. keep trying over and over and then you learn and then again on the next house the bigger house you're going to carry all the knowledge that you just learned into the next house and maybe then now you're going to try something else new in that new house right and and i know you uh you know you talk about the importance of using instructions i i know i'm i pray i'm really bad at that i don't need <laughs> instructions and i just dive right in and i and i always regret it i regret it i go back yeah. I, I make mistakes and then I go back and read it. Why? It's like men with directions. They don't follow well, the directions. I know. They don't like drive it. I know. <laughs> um, but, I, but I see that on some uh, Facebook groups that I'm on. So, some, some folks would be all excited. They just got a kit and they go, well, what do I do first? And I'm just like, read the directions. <laughs> That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, and, and I guess right. the people who who built these kits, they included the directions and, and they know how to put the kit together and they're, they're providing you the instructions on how to do it in the proper order. Now, if you're on your 20th kit, yeah, go ahead and, and wing it. You, you, you have a good sense of what you're doing, but, but if you're brand right. new to the hobby, and this is your first one, dig out those directions and, and label the parts. Um, that should be the very first thing you're doing. And, and honestly, my spring run kit, that's my seventh kit. I am religiously reading those directions when I put it together. I'm, I'm just that way anyway. But when you're yeah. new to this hobby, just the instructions, they, they come with tips along the way on easier ways to do things. And then you can look ahead um, I can't stress that enough. And, and sometimes you're reading those instructions more than once just to kind of get a grasp. And, and believe me, it, it will click. It will sink in on how to do it. So just, again, just give yeah. yourself patience 
and just read yeah. the direction. And, I mean, being on your 10th, 11th, or more house, this must bring you joy. Oh, I do and, love it. And so yeah. can you talk a little bit about, about the about enjoying the process because a fair amount of that time is making the house and not the whole ta-da. Do you almost feel like you don't want to get to the end sometimes? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the house behind me. Um, the house behind me is my big one. And that's how I got started on my Instagram account. Um, this house was already built, but the inside was a blank slate. And um, so I just decorated the inside and wired it. And, and I just thoroughly enjoyed the process. And we all have our own ways of doing things. I like to do one room at a time in a house. Um, it, it just keeps my thoughts straight on, on doing that. Um, but when I was done with this house, it was kind of sad. It, I, it was sad. I, Kind of went through a morning period because I was I yeah, was sad I bet. And working on it, and um, and now I, I mean I still add stuff to it, but as far as right. wallpaper and flooring, I'm done. Um, but yeah. I still add pictures here and there. Um, but yeah. but it's just a process, and there there is no rush in, in putting a house together, unless of course you're doing a kit or creating contest or whatever. But but if you're not if you're not involved in any contest, there's no rush to get this done. I, I know everybody's excited to get to the the decorating part, and that's my favorite part too. And buying yeah, the I was gonna... uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, talk a little bit about what the the favorite parts are. Yes, of course, decorating. Um, yes. Just in terms of, I also want to talk about your process. So, what is your favorite part? What is the your favorite thing to do in the building part? And then talk a little about the process of of decorating it are you co continuously thinking about what you're going to put in it or you to buy everything first how do you go about room by room because yeah. that's yeah back in the day back when in my 20s i would um build my kit and put in my wallpaper and carpeting or flooring or whatever without having miniatures in mind mm -hmm. which is now i think now i say that and i think that is so strange and then as i got older and then um facebook started getting on facebook I, I i learned from other people that they buy furniture before yeah. they decorate and place it and i was like oh wow that's that's a great <laughs> idea an <laughs> idea <laughs> right and, and now i do that and, and it's so much nicer because it kind of helps there's no right or wrong there's yeah. no right or wrong. it's just no what right works for you yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's no right or wrong, wrong way, but now I now I do that. Now I'll buy the furniture first, place it in the room, and then, then it help, that helps me decide where I'm going to put my lamps because I do the tape wire, um, right. and it just kind of helps. Uh, when you get your furniture placed, you kind of get the tone for the room, and then you know what you're going to do for wallpaper, flooring yeah. versus carpeting or whatever. So, so there are some key uh, pieces that you hit on your Instagram account. And you also have a YouTube account, by the way. So folks, yeah. you know, go yeah. check out uh, Same Sue's name. YouTube account. Uh-huh, yeah. Sue's Obsession. Uh -huh. So I, I, there are key things that you sort of tackle, like um, flooring, like wallpaper, like mm -hmm. molding, um, and, and then, and light. So these are like big, big things to sort of think about. And you tackle them and you show them really, really well. On your on your account, so um, let's talk about one of those things. I, I mean, you just mentioned lighting, which mm -hmm. is key. Um, and there are two types of lighting that people can explore, which is the tape wire versus the hard wire. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about. I think you're a tape wire person. Talk a little bit about that. Why you prefer that, and just touch upon. Make us ease, ease. You know, you know. It, tell us how easy it is to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, make us comfortable doing that if we want to. Right, right. The reason why I, I like tape wire and I'm a big fan of tape wire only because that is how I learned in my 20s. Had uh -huh. I learned on round wire, I'd probably still be doing round wire today. Um, that's just uh -huh. what it is for me. I started on tape wire. I'm, I'm very comfortable with it now. Um, so that's what I do. Um, there's nothing wrong with round wire. I, I know there's people out there who love the round wire system, and that is a good system. 
Um, I think every system has its pros and cons. It's just whatever you got to do, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. And if you're not yeah. comfortable with lighting, there's bad. And there's pros and cons to battery lights as well. There's a great um, video but, that you uh, made that just shows how easy you, you make it look so easy. I, I don't know if it's that easy because I haven't done it, but uh, how you curve the, the tape, you just do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, it is easy. And <laughs> I wish people would believe me when I say that um, because, and, and really, for it to become easy, I just would challenge you just to practice. Um, just practice on a piece of, um, you can get foam core and, and practice with the tape wire. You can practice folding the tape. You can practice connections. Um, and again, if you wanna just even start doing it in your house, you can't mess anything up. If something doesn't work, you rip it yeah. out. Um, you can't right. break anything. Um, and, we're talking very low voltage here. You're, you're, <laughs> you're not yeah. going to get hurt. Yeah. No, um, that's, but I know that's, it's very that's, that's, cool, but um, it, it, it is easy. And I, and I hope my videos do make it easy because it really is that simple. I, I guess my frustration is there. I see a lot of miniaturists online, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, and they do beautiful work that I'm so impressed with it. And yet they're maybe afraid or of the challenge of wiring, but I'm thinking, look, if you can do what you're doing. I know you can pound a hammer. Yeah. I know you can put tape down. If you can, if you can do what you're doing, you can certainly pound a hammer. You can pound in these little brass brads um, for all the intricate work a lot of people do. Um, they shouldn't be intimidated by, by wiring. It, it's yeah. just a matter of trying and doing it. Right, right. And the wallpapering. You you also make that look very I love what's that? that? My, I, I oh is that right? Wallpapering. Favorite. That's my absolute favorite. Love wallpapering. Wow. And and they always recommend um getting three pieces of wallpaper for a room. Um I actually recommend getting four pieces. Um because if you yeah. screw up well, first you want to buy all four pieces at one time so all the die lots are the same. Um, but if you yep. screw up, you got that extra piece of paper. If you don't screw up, the good news is now you have an extra piece of paper so that in the future, if you need to do some redecorating or something with your lighting does go awry, you need to redo something, you have the paper. You can do yeah, it, I think so. that's great advice, and I, and although it might cost more on the upfront, it's so yeah. worth it. If you do make a mistake, it's worth it, yeah. and then you you have yeah. it, you know, and you could use it for other um, yeah. other, other things. So, um, let's take a question. Carol wants to know how do you troubleshoot tape problems. That's a that's a loaded question. It sure is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I. When I do my tape wire, when I install my tape wire, I am testing every step of the way to make sure that it is working. Um, it, some wiring wiring kits come with a little test probe to make sure that your, your tape is live, so to speak. Um, and that test probe, when you test put it into the tape wire, um, it'll tell you if you're tape is live. So I am testing that at every step of the way. When I do something, I test it. Um, before I put in a new light fixture, I'm plugging in my system, making sure all lights are going on. And then I unplug everything. And then I start the process of installing a new light. Um, again, just every step of the way you're, you're testing it. And that helps avoid all of a sudden turning it on and you don't know at what point did the system fail you? Right. Um, right. Yeah. Um, uh, so let's talk about um, let, let's talk about some common mistakes to avoid. You mentioned, you know, I I think this is a really key, which is not comparing yourself to, to others. Oh yes, especially in this world of social media. <laughs> Um, there, there are a lot of awesome uh, Instagram accounts out there, a lot of great uh, talented miniaturists out there. And 
And if you're new to this hobby, it, it's very awe-inspiring. And, and I'm very inspired by a lot of folks out there. Um, but just try to resist comparing yourself uh, to others. Look to them for inspiration, but don't beat yourself up if you can't do anything to that caliber. You will someday, but you just have to work your way up. Um, my first house has mismatched trim and <laughs> there's, it's not cohesive at all. Um, yeah. but, but you learn things over time and you get better over time. Um, so just remember, this is your journey and th there's no rush. You go at your own pace, look to others for inspiration, but just be gentle with yourself and, and just appreciate yeah. you know, what you can do. And if you can't figure out something, YouTube is a great resource. There's a lot of good videos out there to help yeah. you. That's why, that's why I, I so appreciate your approach because it comes from such a you know, love yourself, appreciate yourself, don't be, beat yourself up, yeah. you know, this is your journey, your hobby, your joy, find yeah. it, and don't, you know, don't beat yourself up. And some people are, are better at other things, you know, you're going to be better at something than somebody else, and, and vice versa, you know, so we, we all have our talents, um, we can't be great at everything, <laughs> I, there's still challenges for me, so... Um, so yeah, just, um, just enjoy the process. What, what are, are some other mistakes to avoid? Um, let's see. <laughs> I guess, I think some people, to help not be overwhelmed by the process, and I still do this myself, with any house that I've worked on, I keep a journal or a log of my work. Um, and, and what I do is, um, it, it, at the end of the day, when I'm done working on my health, I'll, I'll write a, a short to-do list of what I want to do tomorrow or, or the next time I'm able to get to my house. I'll, I'll write a short to-do list, whether that's cut crown molding or stain crown molding or what, whatever that task is. And I'll just write down two things that I that I want to focus on the next time I get working on my house. And what's nice about that is, is if you can't work on your house for two weeks or a month, when you get back to it, you look at your journal. Oh, that's right. That's where right where I was. I can just pick up right where I left, and I know where I was at. Again, I I personally I like to do one room at a time. But again, that's just the way I like to do it. There's others who like right. to work on the whole thing at once, and that's fine too. But I think keeping a journal um, with your ideas and what you want to work on next helps you yeah. to keep going and it spurs you on. Because then the other thing, it, it reminds you, oh, I have to remember, I have to buy some more wood glue for the flooring yeah. or I have to buy this or that. Yeah. And so it, I find that it, It's just also classic goal setting. When you when you goal set and you get some, something to cross yeah. off your list that you've done, you get that dopamine hit. <laughs> so it yeah. kind of feels good. In, in in my journal, I I do. You can use a notebook, of course. Um, I do a Google. I use a Google Word document, and I don't wow. delete anything. I just keep a running journal um, of when I did something. Because when I get to the next room, I'll be like, "How did I do that again?" And I just kind of go back to when yeah. I did it. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. I did this first and then that. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember all this myself. I like I have to go back and reread re my notes. So yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about um we talked about reading instructions, but is there something about moving too quickly too that people should avoid? Like, like just relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess I feel like it, it's not a race. Um no. It, it, it's not a race. It's it's not a competition. Um, the only person you're competing against is yourself. And I don't know. I just enjoy the process so much. I I don't rush through it. Um, yeah. I just know yeah. this, this is my hobby, and I want to just slow down and enjoy it, um, and not rush through it. Um, again, I I think I, I just speculate that people just get want to rush through it because they want to get to the fun part, which is the the decorating. We all love that part. Um, but you right. just have to kind of control yourself and just, and yeah. again, that helps me then now that I buy stuff to place things, gives me a good visual, yeah. but, but yeah, yeah, just slow it down and 
one step at a time and you'll get there. Right. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about glue. You touched upon glue. I would love to hear what are some of your favorite tools? What are like the five must have maybe? Oh, um, I, I used to do a lot of my houses using the miter box and saw. Um, and then a lot of my houses, I use that. And then I got a mini table saw and wow, what a difference that makes. I that's a time saver. And I, I wish I would have done that a long time ago, um, but that's okay. Um, and, and you can just Google that or, or do a search on Amazon for mini table saws for crafts and, and you'll get a bunch yeah. of hits. And you can get one for which, under Which one do you have? Which one do you have? It's not a, it <laughs> it's what? You have several? No, I just have, have one. Oh. I just have one. Oh, okay. I do not okay. know the brand. It's an off but brand. I, I just okay. use it for, it's not, it's not a, a fancy one. It's very okay. simple. But you're happy with it? it? And it does what you need it to do? It does what it, I need it to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when yeah. I crown holding, I still use my miter box. Um, so just because I'm used to that. Um, yeah. But um, let's yeah, see. I think we could yeah. spend an hour talking about crown molding and how to achieve a crown molding cut. <laughs> no matter how many times I look at a video of how to, I cannot do it. I don't. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's my DNA. I cannot. Do it. <laughs> it is tricky. <laughs> it's tricky, and I watched your video. Uh, on it. I still can't do it. But no, the video is good. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another tool I use all the time, and, and if you follow me, you notice I have blue painter's tape all over the place in my house. I, I use it for a lot. It's my third hand. It, it holds so much. Um, and when I'm trying to cut stuff, um, it will hold a ruler. I'll tape down, I'll literally tape down the ruler so it doesn't get away from me. Um, sometimes if you're holding some stuff, the, the wood will kind of slide on you or whatever. So, so I just use painter's tape. Um, I use that a lot. Um, I don't know. Nice. Every time yeah, I. Good one. So. Yeah, and um, that's that's it. Yeah. And and do you have a favorite glue? I use Aileen's tacky glue. Aileen. Um, I use that for my build. Uh, I don't use wood glue for the building. It's always been Aileen's tacky. I've never had a problem with it. Um, yeah. I use that from day one, and I really like that. Is there a tool you don't have that's on your list that you want to get or machine uh, or anything? No. <laughs> well, you feel like you have- No, I, I don't right. have yeah. tools. Um, I, I'm intimidated really by a lot of power tools. Um, yeah. <laughs> really, my, I tell my people, paper saw is the only one that I yeah. use power. I, I mean, I, I tell people that the toothpick is probably the most useful tool you'll oh, ever yeah. have. And it's- least expensive and it's most available and it serves so many purposes <laughs> but yeah yeah all another right so any other favorite yeah oh i was just gonna say another inexpensive tool um is uh, you can buy makeup brushes at the dollar store and they're great for dusting um dusting little miniatures or, or dusting out your room um dusting off windows i love those yeah I love yeah i used to buy the elf brushes before or Elf became a, like an expensive brand. <laughs> um, favorite brand of tacky material? Having trouble finding one that doesn't melt off the walls but also holds well enough. That's a good, good question. Oh, um, I mean, the sticky tacky. I use Aileen's Instant Tacky. Oh, is that the glue that you? It, it's well, a glue, but like instant tack, it, it, and then it's removable. Instant removable. Tacky is is kind of like the, the putty, for lack of a better yeah. word. Um, that I'll use um, instant tacky to um, hold down some of my little miniatures. Uh huh. Are you a museum wax fan? No, I've never used that stuff. I I have a love hate relationship. It's so with that. popular. It's so popular. Um, but I've never used it. Again, I, I I'm the type. Once I find something I like, I'm very loyal yeah. to it, and <laughs> I, and I really like Eileen's instant tacky. The, the actual um, squeeze out glue version. I have it. I haven't used it yet. What do you use it for? Like to hold stuff oh, in place? Yeah. Instant Tacky is the, the putty that you use to hold stuff in place. 
Uh -huh. And then I use Aileen's tacky glue to to, to glue stuff. To oh, to glue, glue the stuff. Houses. Oh, can I talk about it? A Aileen's has a product that is a it 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 holds stuff down into place, but it's removable and clean, and you could just replace it. It kind of is like a museum wax, but it's it's a glue. Anyway, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you meant. Um, okay. All right. So well, not a museum wax fan, but a ticky tack fan. Um, yeah. somebody, Megan said, it's very nice to hear that Sue doesn't have many tools. You know, you really don't need a lot of tools. I'm you just a tool kind of person. I like stuff for no reason. I probably have 20 tweezers. I only use one that I'm really a fan of just in terms of okay. like the feel and the shape. All the other ones I don't, I don't use, <laughs> but yeah. I, I can appreciate that you don't have a lot of tools and that you have the things that you use and that you need that work for you. That's, that's yeah. really what it is about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We also had someone had a question, not a question, but it was more of a comment. Well, actually, let's go back to lighting for a second, because I would love to your, hear your opinion on the battery operated lighting. Pro, con, are you for? Do you have them? Do you use them? Do you like them? Yes to all. Uh, <laughs> yes, to, yeah. yes to all. Um, what, what I like about the battery operated lights is um, obviously, um, yeah, you're not dinking around with wiring a whole house and you can just place them wherever. Um, what I don't like about them, though, I don't feel like they last very long. I don't feel like the batteries last very long. Even though they say they do, I don't think they do. And I, and I think they dim quicker um, and that you have to replace yeah. those battery. Right. If you're doing yeah. a room box or or a small house, um, battery operated lights are, are great. But if you have a big house in a lot of rooms, it takes a long time to turn on and off all of those lights. And right. truly what I like about doing tape wire is you're flipping a switch and all the lights come on. Yet, interestingly, it's actually more realistic with battery lights because you don't turn all your, you don't have all your lights on in your house at the same time. You have one or two lights on in your house. That's um, right. So if we want to talk, we can go down that road. <laughs> right, right. Wow. But, all right. But so, yeah. I, I, I like to flip a switch and have all the lights come on. But there's nothing wrong with battery lights. Um, and actually, I have houses where I have both battery and my my wired lights. Um, yeah. So they're just nice little supplement supplemental lights here and there if if you can't get your tape wire lights in. So. Yeah. So um, what is what are you working on now, and what is your dream project? Oh, my what? dream project house. <laughs> Oh, and, but that's finished. It is finished. I know. So do you, it's, so that was so that was your dream project. Do you have one in mind for the future, or like yeah. what what's next for you, or what do you well, have in right mind? Now, your bucket list. Yeah, yeah. Well, right now I'm I'm still in the very beginning stages of my spring run kit. I'm only on the first floor, so um, I'm. I've been kind of on a hiatus from Instagram for about a month now. Just the real life is getting in the way, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to get back real, real quick here. Um, so I've been working on my, uh, the kitchen is the next room I'm working on in my spring run. And that, to me, that's one of the hardest rooms. Um, Cause I want to do under cabinet lighting and I'm, I'm working oh. on that now. So um, oh, oh, that's very interesting. we'll see how that, that would be great. I've never oh, done that be... lighting, so I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do in my spring run kitchen. So I'm just starting yeah, to tackle. So we had a question of where did you get that? I'm assuming that kit. Is that from <laughs> miniatures.com? Yeah, it is from miniatures.com. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Beautiful. Try, um, you can try to buy that on a 40% off. That's the time to do it. And is that already posted on the Instagram that you've started that project or yeah. will that oh. be? Oh, yeah. there already. So I, folks I, are asking about that. So they can go to your Instagram oh, yeah. account, follow if you, you look there. My profile, you'll you'll see my spring run kit. Beautiful spring run kit. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. And so any other um, uh, any other words of advice for anybody who's ready to tackle a big project as we close in on this awesome university? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, just dive in. Just start. Dive um, in. Just dive in and yeah. do it. Um, you, yeah. You're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to break anything. Just start it. Um, yeah. And if starting yeah. means reading the first page of instructions, that's your start. And then the next day, just do... If even if you just give yourself a goal of doing one small thing each day, um, you will just get on or you'll, you'll get on your way. Um, you'll just get on a roll and you'll start doing more things. And I, I try to work in my house a um, couple hours a day, um, but there's some days I, I can't. Um, yeah. Again, just, you got to work at your own pace because we we all we're all busy. We all have you know, busy lives. There's always something else to do, but in first my hobby takes a back seat sometimes. So I try to make it a priority. So. Awesome. awesome. So anybody have any last questions before we let Sue go? It's a Canadian company. Let me think. Oh, where did you get that? Okay. They make beautiful lighting. Yeah. Sue, thank, thank you so much. This has been just wonderful. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. And so folks can follow you on YouTube. They can follow you on Instagram and follow yep. all of your learning and learning tips and tools. So thank you for everything you're doing to make us all feel comfortable about tackling some of these big projects. Yeah. And I do try to respond. If people have questions on Instagram, I, I try real hard to respond to people's, uh, if they have yeah. questions, I'm happy to respond. I try to respond to everybody. So <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again. And thank you all. all home and thanks for bearing with us while we got through those technical issues everybody yes. have a great rest of your week all right take care thank you. bye bye